We are live, and stopwatch has started. Hello and welcome to another edition of For Your Film Consideration. For Your Film, what is this, number five? Number five, and today... Five dollar foot long. It's not five anymore, though. They changed it, huh? It's like six, yeah. The economy's a hard place, folks. I know. Capitalism is amazing, though. I love Ronald Reagan. (laughs) 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 This episode is Isaac's topic. Yeah, today... It's my topic, of course. The I best choose topic. the best topics, according to me. And my topic is about music in films. It's something I was thinking about. Um, the main thing that I was thinking about is how music uh, and film go together. You know, a lot, a lot of times you'll hear about uh, these film scores that are great. Like um, you think of Gone Girl, you know, Atticus Ross and Trent Reznor. A lot of people make a big deal about the score, like, oh, yeah, like, and then I thought about it, I'm like, what the hell is that? Because it's not something you pay attention to when you're watching a movie, because you're just sort of watching it, but subconsciously, it affects the way you think about the scene, and emotionally, it affects how you feel about the scene as well. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think about the score when I think of um, Gone, Gone Girl, Girl. yeah, because yeah. Yeah. you're so freaked out by that crazy woman. I, I live it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I've seen scarier. I don't want to know. It sounds terrifying. So, um, when when you thought of film and music combining, was that the first movie to pop in your head? Um, only because that was the first time I heard people talking about a score and I actually looked into it. Other than that, I hadn't heard... Like, oh, look at this score. It really makes... It's a really great score. I'm like, what the hell does that even mean? I didn't know what that was prior to that. So for me, that was important. Because I, I went back to it, and then I listened for that, and I was like, oh, shit, it does make a difference. So when you th- when you heard it, or when you first... Like, that, that sort of clicked, mm-hmm. did you go back to other films that you liked and thought, maybe the music is, is affecting me in a way I don't think about? Or yeah, yeah. Start- like, when we saw... Um, American Psycho. Yeah. Like, the music in that film, like, some of it, it's just, it's ironic in a lot of the time. It's it's funny. It it really goes with the mood of the film, though, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I didn't, I did not think of the score when I think of that movie either. Like, I, I don't, I don't think of it, like, a distinctive sound mm-hmm. when I think of the film. I just think of the, the visuals. But, obviously, the film, um, is heightened by, by certain, uh, I don't know, musical tracks, I guess. Yeah. Like, uh, I guess, it, I'm not thinking about it, but if I was to watch, it, like, the scene where he's naked and he's running down with the chainsaw, when I think of that, I just think of him being naked and running down with the chainsaw. I don't think of the music. <laughs> you don't think of the music. No, yeah. I mean, there's certain movies I'll think of mm-hmm. the music, but it's a, it's a, I feel like that's, um, like, my head is beating, my, my head has been drilled that the music affects it when it comes to, like, classical films, like, I've taken, uh, classes about and then they'll bring up the score then i'll think about it like newer films uh it's kind of hard for me unless i know they're trying to sell like a product (laughs) like yeah like if i watch like uh like an animated film and there's always like a like a taylor swift song or like (laughs) whatever's popular then then i think of it yeah or um what is it my the secret life of pets there's like a system of a down song oh (laughs) my god i remember that's funny yeah yeah so um what Isaac Isaac and I um I, I pick up Isaac a lot and then when I pick him up I'll play the uh, the score from Taxi Driver. Taxi Driver. I don't know <laughs> from why. Bernard like Her- a weird Herman. Thing. Yeah. Because that one I really do think of, of the film. I mean I do think of the music being associated with the film because it's a. Uh, I feel like the music is. It's like it's a jazz score, right? But it kind of feels hypnotic with the visuals. Yeah. Especially towards you've seen it, right? Yeah. yeah. Towards the end of the film where you don't really know. Um, if, um, uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert for like a 40 year old film, <laughs> I, he, uh, he sees himself as the, the hero of the story, right? And yeah. he's portrayed that way. And uh, you see, um, I forgot the, uh, the character's name, but his love interest, Betsy, is that her name? Mm. It starts with a B. No? Let's find out. Yeah. I, Betsy. Betsy. Betsy in the back car and you think it's not, it's it's probably not real, but that music is just uh, so hip- hypnotic and uh, with the visuals as well, like the color is distorted, right? Yeah. New York is, sh- is shown to be really ugly. So that, it, it contrasts pretty well, I think. Yeah. Romanticized but ugly visuals, it's like a hypnotic feeling. 
Definitely. Definitely. Another one of the films, uh, well, not necessarily the film specifically, but that film genre, uh, I was thinking about La La Land and how it was a musical. When I when I walked into it, I, I heard so much great things about this film. A lot of Oscar buzz, obviously, when it, when it was coming out in theaters. But I had no idea it was a musical, so I walked into that and I was like, what the hell is this? So that, that's definitely another element that music plays. And that's a good combination of it, guys, music and film and more so like the theater aspect of film, you know, like, because they're dance, they stop the narrative to just dance and, and sing where really the focus really is the music. It's not more of a subconscious thing, like in the film Taxi Driver, where like it more invokes the mood. But no, like La La Land, yeah, the music is the meat and potatoes. Yeah, I think that f- that film is a is a giant contrast to the director's uh, previous film, which is which was Whiplash. Whiplash, that was another. Yeah, so the amazing. the music is re- integrated into the story, but it also helps to heighten the mood, as opposed to La La Land, where the the visuals I feel like are used to heighten the music. Yeah, yeah. So it's a total contrast. Definite which contrast. Is, which is uh, very interesting. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Um. I think that people don't really um, look forward to that sort of stuff anymore because I think when people go to the theaters today, it's more of a visual spectacle and yeah. you get certain stuff that you're not going to see in uh, smaller productions. Like, obviously, in television, you get like some pretty good um, special effects, like with Game of Thrones and whatnot, but it's obviously not on the level of like a, a giant multi billion dollar uh, project like The Avengers or something. So I feel yeah. like today when people associate going to the movies and people don't really want to go to the movies they'll go for certain certain films right like the avengers the jurassic world um, <laughs> justice league and stuff like that transformers transformers <laughs> yeah so when they 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 want to spend their money on things they can't see anywhere else i think yeah so i think the musical is a is a hard bet for hollywood today definitely because you know, like i said uh, audiences associate the theaters with visual spectacles and if the the theater i mean the musicals are a visual spectacle but they're the visuals are uh used in order to enhance the audio as opposed to so vice versa. the other way around yeah what people are used to seeing yeah so i think it's it's really hard and i think that's uh the uh the people will probably just associate musicals with theater and so if they say uh if i want to get the best musical experience possible i'm going to go to a live setting mm-hmm. concert or you know, the theater yeah yeah of course so I think it's it's hard to uh, compete. Yeah, but I'm, which is really, it's an amazing feat that the director for La La Land, I think Damien Damien Chazelle, Chazelle. That's right. I can never pronounce his name. He like that he was able to do that, and somehow it got to be this big success because like you don't see any. I mean, like there's been a few that have come out in the recent years. Like uh, I don't, I don't. What was the most recent one with um, Hugh Jackman uh, about the circus? Oh, the greatest, the greatest showman. The, or the greatest showman. That's right. Like, yeah, you'll see things like that, but I feel like La La Land really just—it was untouchable when it came out. Yeah, but the of course, showman. of course, it didn't win the best Oscar. Of course, Moonlight won because that was a really powerful film. <laughs> But nonetheless, it, it really was neck and neck with all those top-tier Oscar films, which I think is really amazing to see. Mamma Mia came out this year. Mamma Mia, does that that's a real, that's, that's a musical. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I watched like some but of the But you think Mamma Mia is going to win an Oscar? No, but I'm just li- oh, okay. listing examples. Oh, of yeah, like, yeah, uh, of course, of course. I mean, it's, it's not the biggest uh, project, but it is big enough to where if I told someone down the street, they've probably heard of it. Yeah, they probably yeah. saw like a poster somewhere. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah. So it's not completely dead, but it's not something bankable, I mm-hmm. think. Like The Greatest Showman has Hugh Jackman in it and Hugh Jackman is a is a property star like Wolverine. Wolverine right? for um what did he start in like 2001, 2002? 2000, yeah. So it's almost been 20 years and so he's he has a great name. He he's also in was in Les Mis, which was Of course really another big, one. Yeah, another big one, right? Really big in like uh well, during the award season. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I think even, like, uh, just audiences enjoyed that, too. Yeah. So, it's pretty tough, I think. But possible, yeah, is it going to sweep 
the is it gonna is it gonna sweep <laughs> our industry? No, I don't. I don't, think, I don't so. think so. No, definitely not. There's a great video essay by uh, Lindsay Ellis, formerly known as the Nostalgia Chick. Check great, it out. Yeah, great YouTube channel. She has a a video essay on the death of uh, Hollywood musicals. It's like half an hour long, I think. But yeah, go check it out. It's great and. It's great research for this, which I didn't plan, but I've watched it multiple times because I love her. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> She's the best. <laughs> All right, folks. Let's not take it easy. Things are getting a little hot and heavy in this room. All right. It is really hot in here. <laughs> take off that jet, that sweater. Um, um, what I also wanted to bring, or okay. you, want, you like, mentioned. Oh, you go, yeah. Yeah, uh, was uh, oh, horror films, which yes. is uh, ties in with this season because it's the fall and the new Halloween movie is going to come out. Spooky season. Yeah. And I think Isaac can talk about this better than I can. But. Yeah, one of the the main one that I remember when you think of horror is um, uh, Psycho, right? Yeah, yeah. The and scene Bar- Bernard Herrmann too, right? Yeah, yeah. The scene where um, I mean the, the most famous scene, like where the shower, scene. He, the shower scene, of course. The music in it just. Yeah, it's very powerful, very powerful. Like if you watched it without the music, it just would not have the same effect. Yeah, yeah, and it's played throughout the film. I think like mm-hmm. I remember I watched it last summer, and I was counting how many times it it happens, and it just tightens the mood up so much because of course. the film begins kind of slow when you follow um, what's what's her name? What's the main character's name? Uh, I honestly have no. It's it's been a while, guys. Yeah, I've seen it. It's been a long time. Lila? I think it's Marion. Marion. Marion Crane. Okay. So let's just say Crane. So Crane in the beginning, <laughs> she's just uh what does she but do? She she, she robs from her yeah, from her job. From her own job. It's kinda slow. There's a lover there's a lover story there. Yeah. And you think it's it's not gonna go where it does go. Yeah. And as soon as like uh I think she's uh when she's in the rain driving her car, that's when it heightens up and then you meet Norman Bates and then it sets it up perfectly. Yeah, the mood just Yeah, and and uh the 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 use of the use of a uh, of a scene without audio is is powerful too because I think when Norman shows up there's not that much music it's just kind of it's very the, quiet it, yeah and, and bleak. it's focusing on his uh his bizarre personality yeah so I think if you can combine the two rather well it it, yeah, uh, just it creates the, a powerful the effect. contrast between those two really very powerful technique if you you're a master of it of course I think uh, another film that uses a that doesn't use audio powerfully is a uh, you were never really here which i did a video essay on you check can go that check out. that out the different now. approaches to film i think it has like five views <laughs> and in that movie there's a lot of uh scenes where there is no audio and it forces you to take in the the visuals in it so i think there's a there's a powerful way to use film i mean use music and when you subtract the music you can also enhance the experience as yeah well. the experience yeah of course so you gotta be very masterful and very uh, selective. Uh, yeah, how to use it. that's like a whole another art form there. That's just another depth to it. Yeah, this was a uh, unexpected, very but good chemistry. Yeah, very good. Uh, do you think? Uh, are there any other musicals coming out that we uh, highlighted in our last episode? I can't think of any new ones. No, no. no. But uh, do you have any uh, other thoughts? No, I think we got everything. I hit everything I wanted to hit. Okay, well, this has been episode five, five of For Your Film Consideration. We are going strong. This is our most popular series apart ap- apart from our uh, RTF plays Fortnite. Which, uh, guys, I know you guys love Fortnite. We're coming back. We're coming back strong. We're going to record tomorrow. But you know, Some new characters and new friends. So. If, like I said, if you guys want to hear more about American uh, musicals, then go check out Lindsay Ellis' channel. Well, what's her channel name again? It's just Lindsay Ellis. Lindsay Ellis. Yeah, she okay. does a uh, film video essays. So um, I watch them for fun because I like film and I have no friends. <laughs> there you go, folks. All right. Episode five. Thank you so much. We will see you next time. Next time.